Good morning, Way family. Good morning, the Way family. So good to see you. So good to have you be a part of our services. We're so glad that you have joined us. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the word. I'm ready to go forth. And gee, I believe God has a word just for you. But before we start, let's just open in a word of prayer, okay? So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for joy down in our souls. We thank you for the Way Christian Center. We thank you, oh God, for the family that you have put together, that you have made us join a part of. Lord, I just want to lift up our communities. We want to lift up our families. God, we want to pray for the family of our brother, Brandon Bernard, praying that you would give them peace in this time. Lord, we're just praying that you would bless our communities with the violence. Lord, that you would begin to intervene. We pray for those who are still incarcerated, even among this pandemic. God, would you send comfort? Will you send peace? God, we just thank you for all that you're doing. We just want to give you the glory. We just want to center our hearts. We want to center our hearts today as your word comes forth. God, will you pour into us? Will you give us a new perspective? Will you change our hearts? Will you open our minds? We say, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, the Way family. I'm so glad to be here with you. Look at all our fanciness. This is really amazing. Shout out to Mike Carpenter and shout out to the worship team. You all sound amazing. Thank you so much. I really miss you. I miss you all. This is just, you know, I miss you being here. I miss us. But, you know, we're going to go on in Jesus' name. I believe God has a word for us today. And um, the topic that we're going to talk about today is perpetual liberation. We want to talk about perpetual liberation. All right. This is coming from Isaiah 61. And I don't know about you, but I grew up in a black church. That might not be everyone's experience, but I grew up in a black church and, you know, in, a, in our songs, we had many names for Jesus. We had many ways that we called on the name of Jesus. We put Jesus in a lot of songs. I wish y'all was here with me because then I could get some people to talk back to me. Because when we had songs or whenever we prayed or whenever we called on Jesus, we had lots of names. You know, we had things like he's a lily of the valley. Uh Uh-huh. Bright and morning star. Water in dry places. Come on. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's a bridge over troubled water. Can I get a witness? Y'all, anybody remember calling on Jesus in this way? We had Jesus, you the light of the world. The rock in the weary land. We had Jesus, you the lover of my soul. Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Are you with me? I wish I had. I wish I could see the comments. Are y'all with me? You, somebody could just get up and say those words and the whole church would go up because we're just calling on Jesus' name. We even have way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, all these words for Jesus. We had many things that we had attributes for Jesus. But you know what? I want to talk today about one of those attributes and one of those roles that I never really heard growing up. I never heard this particular role about Jesus, and that is Jesus, the liberator. Come on, can someone put that in the chat? Jesus, the liberator. You know, this left me scratching my head a little bit because I don't remember any songs about Jesus the liberator. Now, we had songs about being set free. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. We had all those, but I can't remember Jesus, the liberator songs. Like, I feel like we do Jesus like we do Thanksgiving. Where are the Thanksgiving songs? Why don't we have a Thanksgiving song? We have Christmas songs. Can we get a thing? This is how we did Jesus in this particular attribute of who he is. Jesus, the liberator. Today, I want us to celebrate Jesus as the liberator in this little lo- little known role that we know him as. You know, I, I, it doesn't surprise me that I didn't grow up knowing Jesus in this way. I mean, after all, we are in America, 
And after all, it was not advantageous for black people or people of enslaved uh, descendants to know Jesus as a liberator. Perhaps it was all designed that I really didn't know Jesus in this way. It wasn't really taught to me. It wasn't really sung to me specifically that Jesus is a liberator, perhaps by design, but I'm going to leave that alone because we got other things to talk about. Today, in our lectionary passage, we're reading from Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61 uh, verse 1 and 2. If you have your Bibles, please read along with me. Don't take my word for it. Read along with me, Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. And this is a beautiful, I, I'm telling y'all, if I had time, saints, read Isaiah 61 on your own time. If I had the time, I wish I could, re I could preach this whole chapter. It's so rich. It has so many things. I had to narrow down just two scriptures, or we could have been here all day. But I just, we're doing two, because I know y'all got things to do. And, and it, well, no, y'all don't have nothing to do. You got more things to do at home. But we're just going to do these two verses. And it's Isaiah 61. I hope you got time to get to it. Isaiah 61, verse 1 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our Lord to comfort all who mourn. May the Lord bless God's word. Now, just to get a little background to this scripture, this passage was written to a bunch of uh, exiles, uh, Israelites, who were returning home from exile. They have been captive. They have been exiled, just kind of like we. We are on quarantine. They had finally been released from quarantine, and they were on their way back home to rebuild the temple, to rebuild their lives, to rebuild their homes. But they were wondering, was God really on our side? What, after all we've been through, and you know, when they, when they returned home, it was, it was a difficult journey. It was a difficult task. It was, it was hard going. They were wondering, was God really on our side? And if you were to look in your, in your Bibles, the, the passage of this scripture is called the year of the Lord's favor. It is called the Messiah's Jubilee. And in this passage, there is a foretelling of a mysterious person who will bring something called the ultimate jubilee. We're going to get to it in a minute. But this passage is, is telling, some, telling these group of people that one day a Messiah is coming. And this Messiah will do a certain things, all right? And I want you to uh, point out in verse 2, it says, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, when people heard this, if you were Jewish and you heard this, this would think, this would like trigger something. This would ring out words because this was a familiar uh, way to say this is the Lord's jubilee. This was a term called jubilee. Anytime you see the, the, uh, the year of the Lord's favor, it automatically equals jubilee. You got to hear about jubilee. I'm so excited to, I wish I could tell, I wish we could preach this whole sermon just on Jubilee, but I'm just going to touch on it for a minute. Jubilee comes from a concept in Leviticus, Leviticus 25, read it on your own time. But this was a time, this was so good, God is so smart. So every seven years, God would have the Jewish people take a sabbatical from the land. So no, no crops, no farming, no tilling, no sowing. Every seven years, just for that, in that seventh year, you're just going to let the land rest. Just for a whole year. Don't worry about provisions. I'm going to take care of you. Because this is my land after all, and I'm letting, you, I'm letting you use the land. This is my land. I'm going to take care of it. Every seven years, just take a break. Let the land take a break. So then, 
for seven, that was every seven years. So on the seventh year, so seven times seven is 49. On the 50th year is a thing called Jubilee. Somebody say Jubilee. This was every 50 years Jubilee. And look what Jubilee was about. Jubilee was a time when all debts were forgiven. Not just paid back, but literally wiped out. Hallelujah, all debts. Slaves were not only set free, but they were provided with resources to enable them to begin a new and an independent life. Come on, somebody say Jubilee. This is um, a time where the people, um, the people had enough food to live on even though they didn't plant every seven years. And the idea was when you let the land rest, you're gonna let anybody who's poor Anybody who's an alien, anybody who's not um, in a, a situation to have their own uh, resources, they will be able to live off that land that you won't touch for a year. It was a way to make everyone get taken care of. It's an amazing concept. It's called Jubilee. Somebody say Jubilee. Now, this only happened every 50 years. So you got to remember in someone's lifetime, you might only get one Jubilee. And you was like, oh, Lord, let Jubilee come. I got debts. I get, it was all kind of, I could be free. People were so excited about Jubilee. So in this passage, Isaiah 61, when that mysterious Messiah says, hey, I'm here to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It was talking about Jubilee. Now, this was very important because when the people heard this, it made them hope for that Messiah. Ooh, when? When will the Messiah come? I got debts. I'm ready to be set free. I got all kind of issues. I am longing for this Messiah. So look back at Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. Look who the Messiah is coming for. The poor. The brokenhearted the captives, the bound, those who are in mourning. That sounds like the marginalized to me. It looks like the Messiah is coming, especially for those who are marginalized. And my question to you today is, what category do you fit under today? Where will you fit in this list? Are you for, we're all poor in some, some way in our lives. We're, we all not operating on a hundred all the time. We are poor in some area of our lives. How many people are dealing with a broken heart? Like you just can't get over it. Like there's something, somebody or a situation has broken your heart to the point where you don't think you can love again. You don't think you can hope again. A broken heart. How many people feel captive or bound? to things or situations or addictions or people bound. How many people are in mourning today? We have so many people dying. Unprecedented numbers of people are dying right now. And people are going through all, all kind of unfortunate incidents and accidents and all kind of things are happening. If you are in mourning, this is for you. Where do you fit in this category? Because like them, wouldn't it be so good to hear some good news? That, that Messiah said that he was coming to bring good news. Wouldn't it be good to hear, to turn on your TV or turn on CNN or turn on the news just for one time and just hear all good news? Do, don't you just want some good news? Or um, how many are looking for your broken heart to be healed some way, somehow? Or how many are just looking to feel free? You just feel so bound. You feel like you can't do what you want to do. You can't live the best life that you really want to live. Or how many are just ready for someone just to cancel your debts? I, I, I speak that in Jesus' name. God, supernatural debt cancellation in Jesus' name. And to hear that we could actually have a good year in 2021 compared to this year, 2020. Like, who knew? And we don't want no more. So what if someone was coming to let you know that we're going to have a good year coming up? This is what Advent is all about. This is what Advent is about, the anticipation of a liberator. 
the anticipation of, I have all these issues. I have all these things going on inside of me. I feel so captive and I feel so bound, but I'm longing for someone to set me free. I'm longing for my debts to be canceled. I'm longing for my heart to be healed. I'm looking for a Messiah. This is what Advent is all about. Now we're just going to Park that right quick, and I want you to see, and we're going to pick up the story in Luke chapter 4. Head over to Luke chapter 4. I'm super excited about this. Luke chapter 4, I want you to go to verse 18. We're going to pick this back up, and we're going to see a situation where Jesus enters the scene. He walks into the synagogue. Come on, let's read it. It says, uh, Luke chapter 4. And I'm starting at verse 14. It says, um, actually, nope, take that back. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Here we go. And he, Jesus, came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. This was his hometown. This is where he grew up. He from the town is Nazareth. What, What is it? We out here. And as was his custom, he went up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And he stood up to read. Come on, Jesus. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. What you going to read, Jesus? Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind and to set, li- set at liberty those who are, uh, are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now check out these dramatic moments. This is, this is so good. Verse 20, and he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. It was like awkward silence. And he began to say to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. If they had mics in Palestine, ancient, this is the classic mic drop moment. Jesus is a call. Jesus is a cold piece. Jesus came in there. He unrolled the scroll. I like that he rolled it back. Thank you, Jesus, for putting things. Teachers would under teachers would appreciate that. Jesus rolled it up and put it back. Jesus, you all right with me. But then he sat down. He read Isaiah 61. He opened it to that spot. He read it. He sat down. Everybody was looking at him. It was awkward silence in the whole place. And then Jesus said, today. This has been fulfilled in your hearing. It started. It's all happening. It's happening now. It's today. This is my mission statement. This is why I'm here. This is why I'm going to show you who I am. This is my calling card. Let me tell you what my mission statement is. Let's look back at verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is right after Jesus was baptized and the spirit came upon him mightily. And it says the anointed one. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Jesus Christ. Christ means the anointed one, the Messiah. Jesus was telling them, it's me. I'm the anointed one. And guess what I've come to do? I've come to bring good news to the poor. Come on, Jesus. How many are y'all? This is, where did we lose this? Where did we lose the, the ministry of good news? It seems like all Christians do from time to time is go around telling people bad news, telling people why they going to hell, telling people why you can't do that and why you can't do this. When are we going to bring good news to people? This is all Jesus did. He came to bring good news to the poor. We're all poor in some areas. Some of us are poor financially, spiritually, mentally, physically poor. He came to give good news. He came to proclaim, proclaim liberty to captives. I love that word proclaim. It's like a a military shout. So Jesus comes to let you know, not in like, hey, you you free, but to let you know you are, you, you free. 
is is reminiscent of Juneteenth. They didn't know they were free until someone came and told them that they were free. You got to let Jesus proclaim that thing in your life. What else was on Jesus' mission statement? It was to recover sight to the blind. To give people who are blind the ability to see. Those who are spiritually blind, sometimes you just can't see it. You need the light to come on. This is what Jesus' mission statement was, to give sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. This is what Jesus does. And I love this part. Verse 19, it says, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Hold up. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We just heard about that. That, that just sets off jubilee language to a, to a Jewish person. Wait, hold up to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And I love this. This is where Jesus stops. He stops right there and he rolls up the scroll. And remember in Isaiah 61, the whole verse says to proclaim the year's favor, the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Jesus stops it right at to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is why this was such a mic drop moment because Jesus was in essence saying, I am Jubilee. I am Jubilee. Like what you were waiting for to be for your for your debts to be released for you to be set free. It's me today. This has been fulfilled in your hearing. I am Jubilee. Jubilee is not an event. Jubilee is a purpose. Our God is perpetual Jubilee. I love this because the word Jubilee means to um, rest and to release. So Jesus comes and he says, I am the Sabbath. I, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. I, in me, you have perpetual rest. And in me, you have perpetual release. This is, this is so important because everything you read in the Old Testament is just a shadow of what's to come. Everything in the Old Testament was a shadow of Jesus. That whole thing about Jubilee and all the Sabbath rest, all that was all a foretelling of who Jesus would be. Jesus came to be Jubilee. If you believe that, come on, say hallelujah. Jesus is Jubilee. And not only is he Jubilee, Jesus is perpetual Jubilee. Now remember, these people, if you were lucky, you might experience Jubilee one time in your life. Hallelujah. But for, and when Jesus came and says, today I've, I've come to fulfill this, this means that we, New Testament saints, can experience perpetual jubilee that jesus is always available to give rest that jesus is always available to give liberty that jesus is always there to release us and to give us rest can i hear a hallelujah in the virtual chat room i love this because in his first advent when Jesus was on the scene, he came to give salvation. That's why he stopped it at that. He didn't even go to that second part. He just said, hey, this is the, I'm proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. But in Jesus' second advent, which we are waiting for, we are waiting for the second coming of God. We are celebrating his first coming. This is what we're doing right now. But we are anticipating his second coming. And when he comes... The second time, oh yeah, he's going to fulfill the next part of that verse for vengeance. Vengeance on the, on the behalf of his children. Can I get an amen? Where does Jesus want to proclaim liberty in your life? Where is Jesus wanting to proclaim liberty? Where is it in your life that you feel bound, that you feel stuck, that you feel captive, this is what Jesus has come to do. Jesus has manifested jubilee. And he's come to proclaim in that area. It kind of reminds me of, y'all remember when we, were, when we were little, we played hide and seek? Y'all remember hide and seek? Did y'all play outside? I think we'd like, I don't know. I might be old. I hope y'all are, I, I wish y'all were here and I could talk to you, but you're not. So I'm going to go take it by faith that y'all played hide and seek. And y'all remember when the person was it, right? And they would have to hide and you'd count it. And you did all that thing. 
If the game went all sideways and it's like, hey, we, okay, we call, the game's over. What did we yell out? We yelled out something. I don't know. I might be, oh, I hope y'all understand it. But we, under, we said something called, Ali Ali Asin Free. Do y'all remember that? People, Ali Ali Asin Free. And I, I wish I could see if y'all really hear it. I'm going to look at the chats later. This was their signal that everybody who was hiding could come out. And now you could come to base for free. You won't be tagged, you won't be it, but you are free. And this is, I really hear, see this in the spirit, how Jesus is doing us. Jesus is proclaiming liberty. That Jesus is saying, hey, Ali Ali Asin free, come on out. You don't have to hide anymore. You don't have to be captive anymore. Come on out. You can come home. You can come back to base. Come for free. You won't be tagged. You won't be it. You won't be out. But you are free. And whoever God says free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Okay, but can I be honest with you? I just want to just have a moment of transparency. Sometimes I, maybe not y'all, y'all, y'all more spiritual, y'all... Y'all pray for me, but sometimes I, I get frustrated with Jesus because jubilee and liberation doesn't always look like I want it to look. Can I, is that, am, am I, do y'all feel like that sometimes? I, sometimes I get frustrated with Jesus. Sometimes I, I'm seeing all these liberation scriptures. I'm like, okay, cool, 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 cool. That sounds good, but um, yeah, what, when, when that's going to happen? I want you to know that we are not alone. If you can, turn to Matthew 11. We're not alone with being frustrated with Jesus. There was somebody else who was frustrated with Jesus. It was his own cousin, John the Baptist. In Matthew 11, we're going to pick up at verse 2. It says, now when John heard in prison, where was John? He was where? When John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said, are you the one? Are you the one who was coming or shall we look for another? Like, what's up? Like, I thought you was the Messiah. Remember all this Isaiah 61? Like, where, what's, what is it? Are you the one or should, are we going to look for somebody else? Just tell me now. I added the ghetto um, context just so you could get it okay verse four it says and Jesus answered them go and tell John what you hear and see the blind receive their sight the lame walk lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised and the poor have good news preached to them and blessed is the one who is not offended by me Wow. Jesus was like, I'm, I'm leaving my calling cart wherever I go. This is, I am the Messiah, and these are the works of the Messiah. And this is what happens everywhere I go somewhere. People are being set free. Now, blessed are you if you don't get offended by the way I do things. It may not always look like that's what got the Jews tripped up. They missed Jesus because he didn't come the way they thought he should look. They thought he was coming on a big white horse. He was going to overthrow Rome. Jesus was like, yeah, that's coming, but I want to do a work in your heart first. You know, there's plenty of people who were believing in Jesus, but were in prison. We just saw John the Baptist. Peter was in prison. James was in prison. James got killed in prison. Paul wrote the whole epistles in prison. So maybe there's something more to this liberation than our eyes can see. Let me tell you something. Sometimes liberty is not your location, but freedom is your mindset. Maybe it's not where you are. Maybe you're looking around and it feels like you're in a prison. It feels like you're in a bad place. But perhaps freedom is a mindset just like poverty, brokenheartedness, and being bound is a mindset. Poverty is a mindset. Not being able to recover from a heartbreak, being stuck, that's a mindset. Being bound to things. People, places, it's a mindset. 
Freedom happens in your mind first. You have to take those mentalities. You have to take those mentalities out before you get into your promised land. Freedom begins in your mind. And if you don't deal with these mentalities, you'll take them into your promised land. Ask the children of Israel. They can never get Egypt out of their mind. Even when they were on their way to the promised land, in the promised land, they were always looking back to Egypt. We know that sometimes people who get rich that come from the ghetto. What do we say? You can take the person out the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out the person. We say these things because it's a real thing. It's a mentality. You got everything you want, but you still living like you on the block, right? Or relationships. Somebody did you wrong. Someone broke your heart. Broke your heart is over. I'm never to love it again. And then you finally meet somebody who really wants to love you but you can't open up your heart or your mind. You just block them off like, no, I'll never love him. That's a mentality, that brokenheartedness, that poverty, that scarcity is a mentality. Perhaps Jesus is coming to give liberty to our mindsets, not necessarily our location. He's going to deal with the location, but he first needs to deal with our mindsets. Can I get an amen in the chats? I don't know if it's quiet. I don't know. I'm just believing by faith that y'all hearing me and y'all seeing me. Oh, thank you. I got one. I got one amen in the building. One amen. All right. It's like many times, you know what happens? Many times we read this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me. And many times us humans, we take these scriptures and uh, we, we, we equate ourselves to Jesus in the story. They, I think Pastor Donna talked about this. A lot of times when we see a story or a narrative, we automatically put ourselves in the role of Jesus. Like we're never the Pharisee. We're never the leper. We're never the shady person. We're always Jesus in the story. So we'll read this Luke and this Isaiah and be like, oh, yes, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And we're going to go out and do all these things in Jesus' name, because God has anointed me to bring good news and to do all the things. But can I tell you, we are not Jesus. Somebody needs to hear that today. You are not the Messiah. I am not the Messiah. Only Jesus could do these things in somebody's life. Only Jesus can uh, heal a broken heart. Only Jesus can comfort the those who are mourning. These are, these are things that only Jesus can do. But guess what? Jesus is inviting us into his work of liberation. Can I get an amen? It's not our work of liberation. I don't care how many nonprofits you start. I don't care how many charities or good work you do. It's not your work. It's Jesus' work of liberation. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the anointed one. These are all the things that Jesus promised to do, but he is inviting us to join in to the work of liberation. Are you in? Are you down? All right, well, let's see. How did Jesus accomplish his mission statement. Look throughout the, the, the Gospels. Everywhere Jesus, that's how his clap back to John was like, hey, check my schedule. Like, look at my receipts. I've been doing things like this is why I'm the Messiah. But how did Jesus really accomplish his mission? If you look through the Gospels, Jesus accomplished his mission statement two ways. The first way, the first way Jesus did it is through conversations. Someone say conversations. With every healing, there was a conversation. Check me. Every time Jesus healed somebody, it followed a conversation. Jesus humanized people. People who he wasn't even supposed to be talking to, like the woman at the well. They were like, what was he talking to her for? Like, who talks to a woman, a Samaritan woman? Who touches lepers? Who gives uh, women who, uh, who are Gentiles, who touches their daughters and have these whole conversations with, who talks to a centurion soldier? Every time Jesus healed, he gave a conversation. This is something we can learn from Jesus, not just throwing some change at someone, not just, you know, giving and uh, filming the whole time that you're giving, you know, putting it on social media. 
actually having conversations. Humanize people. Next time you see someone on the street who are down or like, have a conversation. Ask them their name. Ask them how they're doing. Have a conversation because healing follows conversation. The second thing, how did Jesus fulfill his, uh, his uh, mission statement? Jesus did it through communities of sharing. Feel me on this. Jesus did it in conversations, but also Jesus did it through communities of sharing. Everywhere Jesus went, he was sharing with people. Everywhere Jesus went, he shared. Come on, he did the fish. Whenever um, they made the big catch, Jesus was shared all those fish. He did the, you know, the, the multitude. He fed the multitude with the loaves and the bread. Sharing, sharing with multitude. He did this a couple of times. Jesus was always at somebody's house eating, having a banquet, chilling with tax collectors and sinners. But my question is, who funded these banquets? It wasn't Jesus. Jesus was like, hey, I ain't got a hot, no, look, I ain't got no money. Jesus told him, hey, don't follow me for stuff because I ain't got it. But everywhere Jesus went, there was a banquet. There's someone was funding these things. There was people who were sharing, the tax collectors, the people. Jesus had a group of women who followed him and just gave to the ministry, sharing. Jesus created communities of sharing. And this even happened post-resurrection in the book of Acts. There was always a group of community of people who shared in weekly Jesus meals. And it says in Acts 4.32 that they shared and they had all things in common. There were no lack among any of them because they all shared. Could it be? Could it be that this is how the work of liberation will get done through us? Through sharing? Through sharing, this is what we learned in kindergarten. This is simple, just to share. This is like we, this is back in preschool. But is it true that maybe this is the key component of liberation, learning to share? Look, when the people on Acts begin to share all of their wealth and all of their houses and all, all their food, they were free, free from consumer goods by sharing. This is what Jubilee and Sabbath were all about. It was to trust God with your supply. And so that's your, and your, trust God with your supply, with your needs, so you don't have to hoard. This is why Jesus said, hey, every seven years, take a rest. I, I'll provide what you need. You don't have to hoard anything. Remember when the manna fell in the wilderness. He said, just take what you need for the day. Don't save it up. Anytime they tried to save it up or hide it or put it, it would break out in worms. You don't need, don't, don't hoard it. Just take what you need and trust me with the rest. This is what Jubilee was about. Every 50 years, release the, all the debts, release the prisoners, release slaves. They all belong to me. You are not supposed to hoard people, things, money. Houses, treasures, land, it all belongs to me. Trust me that I will give you what you need and whatever you have, share. Is this how we are going to take down the empire? By sharing? Is this the work of liberation? Sharing? You know, we have an opportunity to share right here at the Way Christian Center. This, this Christmas season, we have an opportunity to share with our loved ones with Angel Tree. We, we have 47 kids that have been given to us that we're going to give them um, gift cards so that they could get whatever they want for Christmas because their parents are incarcerated. Sharing, sharing our resources. We're also adopting a group home in West Oakland, a boys' group home in West Oakland, and they gave us a list of things that they would love to have. They don't really have parents. They don't have a community. And we want to bless them. We want to bless their socks off. We want to just give them everything they ask for. They don't even think the director there said, hey, guys, put what you want, but just know you might not get it. What if we shared? What if we blessed this group home like, you, like they've never seen before? If you want to be a part of that, go on our website and you could donate. This is our opportunity to share. So uh, as we wind up, we're going to just bring this to a close. I just have a couple of questions for you. In our perpetual liberation, this is what Jesus is doing in this Advent season. Perpetual liberation. 
not just a one-time deal. God's not like a one-and-done type of Savior. And a lot of times we have a salvation experience, and then we're like, oh, that happened in 1982. But perhaps Jesus is always circling back in your life. Perhaps Jesus is always trying to free us from different areas. Perhaps Jesus is always coming around to bring us liberty, that we're never to be stuck. We're never to be in prison. We're never to be bound. Jesus came to proclaim, hey, you can get out of here. Like, let's go. You've been set free. My blood purchased everything you need. Come on, let's get up out of here. This will silence the lies of the enemy. The enemy wants to keep us bound, wants to keep us believing lies. But I'm here to declare that Jesus is a liberator. This is something that we don't really celebrate. I need Lauren Adams to write a song about Jesus, the liberator. We don't got no songs about Jesus, the liberator. But this is our time to celebrate the fact that Jesus is a liberator. This is one of Jesus' attributes that he's always trying to free us. He's always uh, setting us free. He's always liberating us, and he's always manifesting in jubilee. I have a couple of questions that you could take with you. First question, in this Advent season, how is Jesus trying to manifest as jubilee, rest and release in your life? Stop and think about it. In this Advent season, we're almost to, to Christmas. But in this season, how is Jesus trying to manifest as Jubilee? How is Jesus trying to give you rest and release? Rest and release. Second question, where is Jesus proclaiming liberation in your life? Where do you need to hear Jesus say, hey, you free from that. You're no longer bound. You're dead to that. I died for that. You don't have to worry about that. No, you are who I say you are. You're not who you were. You're not your mistake of the past. You're not what you did. You're not your mistake. You're not a regret. You are who I say you are. You're a child of God. Come on, let's get up out of here. Where is Jesus proclaiming liberty in your life? And number three, where can you see Jesus' mission statement being fulfilled in your life? Remember, Everywhere Jesus went, he left a calling card. Everywhere Jesus went, he left like, you want to know what if I was here? People going to be healed, people free, people going to be able to see, people going to be able to hear. So my question is, where do you see Jesus' mission statement in your life? We all need to have a testimony in one of these areas. Come on. One of these areas, we, we need to be able to tell somebody. That, man, I got good news. Good news is that Jesus changed my life. Man, my eyes were open. I used to really be living a whole different kind of way, but now I see. Like, I, my mind was, like, really dark, and I really just couldn't see hope, and I couldn't see peace, and I couldn't see joy, but now I can see it. Come on, you need a testimony in one of these areas. You need a testimony that I've been set free. I used to be bound by so many things mentally, spiritually, physically, but I'm free. Do you have a testimony in one of these areas? What about those who are mourning? Have you received comfort? Do you have a testimony that Jesus is the ultimate comforter? Yes, it's hard. Yes, death is hard. Yes, it's hard to accept. But there's something that Jesus does that takes over that load for you. You don't feel the full impact of the weight of grief. Do you have a testimony that Jesus is who he says he is as the Messiah? I'm talking about perpetual liberation. Remember, who the sun sets free is free indeed. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Come on, let these words marinate in your spirit. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of bondage. We're going to close with this. And we want to lean into Jesus as a liberator. I want you to lean into it. I know it hasn't been taught through to us in this colonized society that we've been brought up in. But I really want you to lean into the fact that Jesus is a liberator. I want you to celebrate. I want you to experience it for yourself. When we go back 
to Isaiah 61, Jesus is always liberating us into the instead. Come on now. Jesus is always liberating us into the instead. Check me out. In Isaiah 61, verse 3, it says, Jesus, he came to comfort all who mourn, to grant all who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes. The oil of gladness instead of mourning. A garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. In verse 7 it says, Instead of your shame, there will be a double portion. And instead of dishonor, they will rejoice in their life. God is liberating. God doesn't just take you out of something. God takes you out and gives you something instead. God just doesn't leave you empty. God's not just trying to pour you out and just leave you dry. He will give you something instead. Jesus wants to replace everything you've lost. He wants to replace it and give you an oil of gladness. He wants to give you beauty for ashes. He wants to give you, instead of shame, he's going to give you a double portion. Come on, will you rejoice in that, God? Will you receive it? If you receive it, say, yes, Lord. Will you begin to worship God, even right where you are? God, I want to know you in this way. Come on, let's just begin to pray, God. We want you, we want to know you as a liberator, God. This isn't always highlighted. This isn't always celebrated. But we want to celebrate and lean into you as a liberator, God. We receive perpetual liberation. We receive that you are always coming into our hearts. You are always coming into our minds to set us free. You're always opening doors. You're always making a way. You're always healing the brokenhearted. You're always giving us good news. You live to give us good news. It's the enemy who wants to give us bad news all the time. But we believe that you are giving us good news. We receive it. We receive perpetual liberation. We we receive that you are manifested as jubilee. God, we receive rest and we receive release in Jesus' name. God, we want to know you in this way. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are here today and you've never heard of Jesus as a liberator and you want to know Jesus in this way, I want to invite you to make a decision to follow Jesus today. It's a decision, it's one decision that you will have to continue to build upon for a lifetime, but will you make a decision to say, yes, I want to know this Jesus. I want to follow him and I want to know him in the fullness because Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and he rose again just to give you liberation. It's Jesus' calling card. Wherever he goes, he's bring, he brings liberation and freedom, and we receive it today. We want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for rocking with us. Thank you for hanging out with us at the Way Christian Center. I love you so much. I miss y'all, but I'm so glad that we're able to fellowship in this way. We want to continue to pray for our church family, continue to bless our pastor and our first lady. We love them so much. Don't forget this week. Wednesday is our all, all church huddle. I think we're doing ugly sweaters. Do whatever you bring out something festive. But this Wednesday is our church huddle. And also, don't forget, if you want to give to Angel Tree, if you want to give to this group home, why don't you go to our website so we can bless them real good. We love you. Don't forget to hang out for the way we see it is coming on right after this. God bless you. Have a good week. Love y'all.